rolling. Darius Weems is a 15-year-old freshman from Athens, Georgia, and appears healthy. Hello again, this is Bill Liss calling, LIWS. I'm with WXIA Television News, and I do uh, things trying to help folks to get things that are kind of difficult to get otherwise. He has the same disease that took his brother's life when he was just 19 years of age. What I would like to do is to uh, try to give you guys a hand to do something with MTV and see if we can really get them to really get on the, on the horse here and get things done for you. He was born with Duchenne, one of the nine types of muscular dystrophy. Look forward to talking with you and giving you all the help we can and trying to uh, speed the process so you can get what you need to make the trip a big success. Thanks a million. Look forward to hearing from you. Bye-bye. It's a degenerative disease that one day will affect all his voluntary muscles as well as his heart and breathing ability. I'm proud to meet you. You're a fighter. Can you win the fight? I think so. I think I take it. This is KNX 1070. John, I want you. Brought to you. For listening. Top 10. You're a fighter. I think I take it. DMTV. I'm going to break off the quick rap for y'all. Because I'm leaving and I won't be back to y'all. First, let me dedicate this song to my brother. We got different fathers, but we still got the same mother. I miss you black, but I know you got my back. As I head out with, with a seat that scrap. Speaking of a seat, I got a regular wheelchair. But I be the first to say, I don't care. But if you must know my history, it's cause I got muscular dystrophy. Six years ago, I loved the wall. The wall. I'm 15 now, and I love the talk. Love the talk. I can tell the world on MTV. What I mean by DMD, it took my brother when he was just 19. The line is short, now it's coming to me. But before I go, while I still can flow, I want to open the door and let folks know that old people talk about Jerry Lewis and the young people talk about new and coolest. Music TV versus Sithella Thun. Which show is you thinking I want to be on? Young people don't even know Jerry Lewis. If I'm on your show, they will see I'm the truest. At the Georgia, I grew up in public housing. I never seen a state line, beach, or a mountain. In fact, I never even left the county. But with all that said, you best not doubt me. Cause I'm coming MTV, I'm coming for you. On a road trip followed by a movie crew. With 11 of my friends, I'm headed out west. My mission by now. Now I hope you guessed my final goal is Los Angeles where the anger so big it's scandalous I watch a hit show almost every week I believe my wheelchair deserves a tweet I deserve to be a star with your host exhibit Cause I'm the new hero, I'm proof on living Your website said all the state can't apply I'm breaking my wheelchair so you can pimp my ride Pimp my ride, pimp my ride. That's right MTV I wanna get my wheelchair customized on your show you got 70 million viewers, all of them the age that lives with DMD and dies with it. I'm gonna let this generation know, cause they gonna be the one to change it. I believe that. There goes West, DGW, know about it. I met Darius at a summer camp for kids with disabilities called Project Reach. Probably about five or six years ago, I started volunteering and immediately kind of clinged on to Darius. He was, you know, a funny guy. Get the freaking camera up your face. I met Darius, I think it was here. It was here at Project Reach. Well, uh, it's a camp with a whole bunch of cool kids. We be doing sports. Functional academics, art, or even having a whole bunch of fun here. I see myself as a counselor, but I'm a camper. Like, I get along with all the kids you get to meet area, just have a good time. See, when I first met him, I remember people telling me, you know, that's Darius. He, you know, he has a fatal disease, and I felt kind of nervous about it. You know, I didn't know how to confront him. and. He actually came up to me first and asked me if I played video games, and that just kind of started everything from there, just built our relationship. The kids are definitely what I like the most about Project Reach. Every day they come there just being real excited and being really happy to be there just really makes me feel good about what I'm doing. Is that G? Is that G? 
the only thing I can say is, yes, he is a hero. And that's the three words I can say. Darius is funny. I mean, he's real funny. He cracks me up. I like Darius. Um, sometimes I get a little scared of his wheelchair. I know they'll be able to, to you know hit his wheelchair. I love the guys from Pimp My Ride because I watch it every day. So. You know how fast he goes with his wheelchair? He kind of creeps me out. I mean, I really want to get see it pimped. I mean, I want to see it real pimped. Hey, great. I really will be missing my best friend because we like to hang out, we like to talk, we get each other five every day. I'll write to him every day. Like I say, it's my buddy, it's my homeboy. The first time I saw Darius, he was shooting baskets at Project Reach. That was 10 years ago, I think. And I actually didn't know Darius that well at the time because he wasn't in my group that I was a counselor of but his big brother Mario was, so it was through Mario that I really got to know D. Mario loved his mama, and he loved his brother and sister. If Darius father heard this day, Mario used to cry. And Darius, like, one time Mario said, you need to get him out of here. Mario said, I can't stand him. I wish he didn't have to sleep in the room with me. Darius took a magnet and stuck on Mario's TV. The TV turned green. <laughs> He understood that Darius also had what he had. Before he died, like, he asked, look and watch over me if, it, if anything ever happened to him. When Mario asked me to look out for Darius, I think I was too young to comprehend. But I think he, un I know he understood because he knew that Darius was old enough to remember how he coped with the disease. And he went out of his way to show Darius how happy he still was, no matter how hard it got. And I think he just wanted me to be Darius's friend when things got harder. Just something about him. Like, even though he had his muscle dictionary, he didn't let it affect him. Like, he stayed happy. He, like, strong, like, he can take anything. I just, like, see my brother. All the stuff he went through, it made me strong. Like, he showed me. You can't sit in one mode and like, gotta try to make some moves. I can't find dates. I have the feeling that he went going nowhere. Mario just kept going back and forth to the hospital. And it was just like, it did something to Darius. It's funny that day four, right? I just thought like, gotta do something. Like, you gotta find out something to stop it. Like, you gotta find out like, some way to make it better for other people made me open my eyes up and try to be the strong one since the strong one died. My brother, like, he opened up the door for me. This right here, he gonna open the door for people who's coming and people already here. Not to have a father around all the time. He gonna care because he got 12 guys who did something more than what a father could ever do. And not feeling sorry for him, but just love him as a family member, a friend, or a brother. Somebody once asked me if I could tell Mario anything, what would it be? I didn't have an answer at the time, but I definitely have one now. And I would tell him with all the pride in my heart that Darius goes west. The last person in our crew I want to introduce is the inspiration for this whole project. He's the man of the hour, the man of the day, and the man of the lifetime. No sense waiting any longer. On the bus is Darius Williams. Come on out, man. Gonna, it was gonna be big, but I didn't think it was gonna work out this well. It says, now therefore, I, Heidi Davison, mayor of the unified government of athens Clark County, do hereby officially proclaim July 22nd as Darius Goes West Day. I was actually born in Macon, Georgia. I don't have a key for that. 
Alright, alright, so we're, we're about to leave Athens and we're about to reach the biggest intersection and it's a red light. Since I was working sound then, I, I wasn't on the RV, I was standing outside of it trying to uh, adjust all the mics. I lived in Cookville for 20 whatever years, I don't have a key to Cookville. And we got these police following the RV. Police motorcycle just zooms by us with the sirens flashing. I lived in Murfreesboro for six something, you don't have a key. And the RV started rolling away and I wasn't on it and I could hear everyone talking and I had no way to you know, talk back to them and tell them that I wasn't on the RV and that I had to get on it. Uh, my parents barely even gave me a key to our front door. Police motorcycle just stops traffic and we're just like, we just ran the biggest red light in town and look, there's all these cops and they're not pulling us <laughs> over, you know? Like... But Athens, I have a key to Athens. <laughs> and I think that's because I was a part of something that was better than anything that I've done to date. Of course, it's a weird feeling saying your first goodbye, but for Darius, you know, it's just exciting for him, and you've never been independent your whole life, and then all of a sudden, your mom's not there anymore. I dare go with Dave, like he did something to me. When the key first turned, I, I, like, I'm ready to roll now. And I felt like I was famous, and everybody waved at me. Like my mom was hollering, crowd, that's my baby. Seemed like you were my destiny going this trip with all my friends. For the first time in my life, I was going west. All right, 7,495 miles left. Pretty comfortable. Daniel Epting, I was a driver, and the father, the mother. He's a driver. Maid, <laughs> clean up, organizer. Keeper of peace, doctor, psychiatrist, psychologist. He gets you if you talk a lot of junk. Electrician, technician, mechanic. Pretty much I should get paid. He might not get you then and there when you're talking junk, but he'll remember it. A lot of driving gloves are made out of leather and they got too much friction, so I just soon go bare knuckle. Been a road trip my whole life. I got a little pride in my driving. Granted, I've got my wrecks. I had a few tickets. Definitely, definitely don't have the best driving record. This is the uh, first two miles I've ever driven anything this big. I had a total, totaled a couple trucks. I didn't really want to really tell everybody that too much before this trip occurred. And I've only totaled one truck. Wrecked a couple others. I knew he was in good hands. But only totaled one. I knew he was coming back. I just had to get used to him being away from me. Look. Yeah, they don't have a refrigerator in there. <laughs> we made a pit stop at a, at a gas station, and it's Darius's first pit stop. Just don't think about all the stuff you've experienced and all the stuff he hasn't experienced. When I got off the lift and I had to use the bathroom, I got off the operation, and boom, something happened. It went accessible. The first gas station we stopped at ended up being not wheelchair accessible. One of the major points of the documentary was to show wheelchair accessibility around America. There was no ramp or any other way that Darius could get in there. So I ended up at these bathroom on the RV. They need to make stuff more accessible just in case somebody that got a disability might come by and they might need that ramp for help. The gas station was a real eye-opener for all of us. I remember driving across the Florida line and thinking, what if Pimp My Ride's door, the door we're driving across the country to knock on, is up a flight of steps? How many beaches Florida got? Tons of them. Hey, is that Cuba right there? See how far it goes? Ain't no Cuba. Can't oh. sharks make any sound? <laughs> I might bite it back. That's what I'm talking about. Go to the beach, tell my six pack off. Yeah! <laughs> I don't flex it. For who? The girls. I <laughs> just a sneak peek. Don't be hanging because I got muscles bigger than yours. <laughs> Mom. Hey. Hey. What's up? Now what? You having fun? 
Yeah. Yeah. Have mercy, my baby called me. Miss you around here so quiet up in this house. You miss me? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You get home here and you get in the house. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Someone said that you are crying after I left. I was. Yeah, I'm glad to see that. Ooh, wait. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, my baby ballin'. We out down the floor walking through the sand behind you. <laughs> <laughs> Of the world, I ain't never seen. You can tell me all about you get back. What you about to do, Mom? Oh, I'm going to bed, get my beauty rest. Oh. You sound like you're about to cry. <laughs> you about to cry? No. Oh. You wish I was there to tuck you in. <laughs> I'm going to kiss you. Yeah, well, don't be the same when you're going to talk and jump. Fit my leg. Turn me over. I miss all that. Well, I appreciate them giving me the break, and I'm finna get ready to let you go. Okay. All right, you take care and get you some rest. I love you. Don't wait. I love you too, son. Okay. You just make it home safe to me. And don't overdo it. Don't eat too much. Hysterious. Huh? Good night. I love you, son. Okay. Hang up, because I won't hang up. Okay. I need to hang up the phone. Huh. She gone? Hang up, please. No For real, we're going to the beach tomorrow. We're going to have fun. I heard sharks like the color green. Yeah. Jerry, you're not wearing your shark protectors, dude? <laughs> <laughs> Watching Darius look out at the beach for the first time, I could only think about how much support it took to get us there. Our trip was almost completely funded on local piggy banks, a door-to-door -door barbecue, and the pre-selling of thousands of movie credits. I say almost funded because two weeks before the trip we were short on budget, and a woman named Lorene Arbus through a disability agency called United Cerebral Palsy in exchange for passing out bracelets for their cause gave us the money we needed for ours. And that cause was to raise awareness for our nation's caregiver crisis. How do the causes line up? Well, the role of a caregiver and the importance of it in our society is something that we as a crew throughout the trip really began to understand. seeing a Logan and Darius sitting on the, the pier of the deck and they were both looking out over the ocean and Darius was just staring at it and uh, this could be Darius's first and last time at the ocean just made me want to 
put him back in, I guess. Darius was the only kid I knew at the MD, so before the trip, I posted our story on all these muscular dystrophy forums. And through this doctor and the families that responded, I really began to get an idea of how many people this disease actually affects. It is the number one genetic killer of children in the world. It's an equal opportunity disease in that it affects everyone. One in every 3,500 boys born throughout the world have Duchenne muscular dystrophy. You know, at the time that Charlie was diagnosed, there are no words to say how much that has deeply changed us. But to me, it wasn't a lightning bolt just because I didn't look around and see immediate destruction. Just it, It's kind of more like a tree laying its roots. The challenge is not to have the roots strangle us but to have us grow something out of it. We only found out about Aiden having DMD a year and a half ago. It's such a cliche, but it can happen to anyone. Like, we have no family history. I have two older, healthy, athletic sons. And never in a million years would I have ever thought I would be touched by something like this. And it, it just happens like that. People I work with and our neighbors and our friends, they all kind of sympathize with us, but they don't, I don't think, really understand what it's like to have this there every day. Well, actually, when like on an, a daily basis, when he's when Aiden's around, it doesn't really come to mind. Like you're, you're just like playing with him and having fun with him. You don't really think about it. But then at night, you like go to bed and you'll think, "Wow, he's got muscular dystrophy." That's, but it doesn't seem to bother him. Like he's always happy. He has a huge smile on his face. Oh, Hi. I'm very nervous about the connection between muscular dystrophy and wheelchair. Charlie and Sammy both know that Charlie has muscular dystrophy, but to them that just means, you know, sometimes he gets tired and has to rest, but that's pretty much what MD is to them. One, two, three, blast off! Usually at school he's the last in line because he walks slower than the other kids and he calls himself the caboose. The you know, I think he understands he's the caboose because he has muscular dystrophy. So I, I worry that he's going to fall. I worry that he's going to get out of bed at night and fall down the steps. Like, I worry about it so much right now, but then I don't usually really jump ahead to the future. Children will lose the ability to walk or ambulate, requiring a wheelchair by the age of 10, and there essentially is no treatment for Duchenne muscular dystrophy. The kids who have DMD, by the time they're ready to go to a wheelchair, they feel the freedom of it. They can move, you know, all the kids want to try it and want to race it. As hard as that is for me to swallow, for them, it's like progress and they're happy. I would think he was going to be a football player from the size of him. He was nine and a half pounds. When I like, got older, I started asking questions. She let me know. I told me straight up truth. I fuss at Darren like it ain't nothing wrong with him to let him know that he's, you know, he's a smug kid. Since we got a week, like, I can find ways to help myself more. Like, say, if I have a cup or something, I lean over, then I help put it up like that. Or like I don't develop a way, like, I can put the whole cup in my mouth and just lean back. <laughs> Telling the truth and let people know about the disease and some good gonna come out of it. Duchenne muscular dystrophy is the most common and the most severe. It's 100% fatal with children dying in their late teens and early 20s. Like, it's a killing. Like, like killing, it can take you up and take your life. My goal again is move though. Like, let people know I live in life until I can't live it no more. Every little thing that you wouldn't give a second thought to is bizarrely, intensely beautiful. You know, picking them up at the bus stop and they have their backpacks and they get off the bus. Sometimes I just look at them and say, you know, don't take this from me. Like, I do appreciate this, you know? I, it's like, you just, wishing to whoever's in control that it wouldn't be taken. You know, he's showing all these people this and tell them just live, don't sit back and not do nothing, just live. He's a legend. On the other streets of spreading the word. First city I ever seen and first city I heard. Me and the crew, 
We out here bonding. Heard you got a first teller. Thanks for responding. You expressed concern for working on the chair. Afraid I couldn't roll with all the stuff on there. But I promise, ain't no need to worry. I'm a big old boy and my chair can scurry. My book bag weighs more than pimp edition. My friends write so much I need to charge admission. So please, please, please don't fear. I sign a release, it's no problem here. Though the true mobile issue is actually here. I can't blame you, it's easy to confuse. Only builders can give me opposition. The problem with the building, not my condition. But on Bourbon Street, ain't no problem at all. Some shirts lift. Some be fall, word on the coast, must be catching. Cause it's just the third day, already I'm a legend. I'm a legend. I'm a legend. Remember what I said about Jerry Lewis? Who is he? Who is he? Young folks are clueless. If you know him, you must be older than me. Cause my age don't. Just watch and see. Can you tell me who Jerry Lewis is? Uh, didn't he play like piano or something? No. But it sounds good. No. It was sad. Great balls of fire. Uh, Hip his wheelchair. He's a 1950 comedian who tries to use fame to help the shin. On the telethon, he gets lots of money exchange. But on my age, he's lost and the channel is changed. They die the remote, press MTV, and I can only hope they soon see me. Cause the same fool who just had no clue, no pimp, no ride. They hope to see me too. DGW, know about it. I think when we were at the swamp, that was Darius's first time on a boat, so <laughs> kind of scared him a little bit. The swamp was scary. It looked like we kind of in a swamp slash jungle. Like when the boat started making noise, I was like scared in my head. I thought I thought we were gonna flip over some because all the alligators. Like, they can like they was ready to eat somebody if they fell in the water. Darius was frightened out of his mind. I guess he's never been that close to something that fierce. I see alligators on Discovery Channel. I'm really seeing them in real life, like big ones, like huge ones. Hey, he likes marshmallows. <laughs> If you get bit, we'll film it. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and the driver, then you know him, he's a little crazy. He got out the boat. Like, I thought he was going to get eaten up by the alligators. I'm on my drive. He get killed. That was awesome. It, uh, it was like a huge man purse. I would highly recommend petting wild animals. I was touching a little baby alligator. It like, felt soft. I wasn't ready really to worry about the baby alligator. I was still focusing on the big ones. What? Oh. Oh. He's right here, Leah. I'm gone. <laughs> I specifically remember the day before telling Daniel, the driver, how smoothly everything was going. I knew I was going to eat those words, and sure enough, we were leaving the swamp, and it started to rain. That was the beginning of the breakdown. Hey, you guys, hold on. This might not be the most comfortable way to go. I just don't know if I can get any speed up if I stop still. Man, we're running. We were going along, and it rained, and then we lost all the power. And The only thing I can think of is losing the high gears if somehow the transmission messed up. I mean, I had no clue. We pulled over and waited, and then it ran again for an hour. I was irritated, but, uh, you yeah, know, it's just part of the story. Good Thanks. Uh, yes, ma'am. I've got a problem. I'm in an RV that we rented from y'all, and uh, it's not wanting to go more than 30 miles an hour. This is a transmission fluid. Three gears all changed. You see how long this dipstick is? That right there tells you that it's cool. You know, like Jason, Jason was a huge help during that period, you know. i tell you what's wrong here. You don't have 24-hour roadside assistance? You see this switch here, it's called a canooter snooter. And what happened is it doubled up back against right tower dater. How's the main what conditions? And that thing jumbled up the computer hooter dooter, and, uh, and we just, that can't happen. 
Yeah, right. Hey, I want one of those Darius t-shirts with no sleeves. That just can't happen because your car's going to go look, 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 like that. We're on a tight schedule. We're on our way to California. We can't afford this. And when you try to turn it, it's not going to turn. It's just going to go look, 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 like that. And that's what's wrong. At this point, we don't really know what's going on. You know, we have an itinerary. We have stops to make, reservations at hotels. We have people that are doing stuff for us on certain days. So they definitely wouldn't tow us to San Antonio. We went to a struggle like, first it went slow and we thought we fixed it. It started back and finally broke down. Like that night, it like, scared me like, man, I hope this don't mess the trip up. We broke him down. Yeah, we'll make it, we have to. We can't stop now. We already started. Can you say a prayer and hope that everybody gets better? Wait till I'm through. I'm not through yet, excuse me. Okay, amen. Like, it was a little praying chihuahua and make it so, like, fun. Like, like we was next to Taco Bell. Like, it could have been a Taco Bell, dog. The whole time that there was a breakdown, D was like, yeah, whatever. He was just happy to be away and experiencing things. Go right, go right, go right. I should have pulled it, but that RV's huge. Might break my wheelchair down like it was. We got back on the road going 30 miles an hour. It was just pointless to keep going at that pace. We're just going to try and get some sleep. We're supposed to go to the Alamo tomorrow, but we're going to forget the Alamo for sure. So good night. They won't let us film inside, so it's done. Cut it off. We had to start discussing like other ways to get across the country, and there was talk of like renting like a car for just to get Darius across and it seemed like it was a possibility that it could happen a different way than we had been planning for so long. I mean, if worse comes to worse, we'll take a limousine. I was absolutely freaking out during the breakdown. I mean, I would have had to split the crew up, which is why I've never been so happy to hear the phone ring when Daniel called from the mechanic to say that the RV was fixed. So we had a uh, twisted air filter. But we're only 22 hours behind schedule. Try to get a good 10 or 12 hours out of me. I found a four leaf clover on my way down there. The way to line through. Uh, it made me think uh, the dog was praying and the uh, RV got fixed. After basically no sleep, the new challenge was to drive all the way across Texas in one night. We were obviously sleep deprived by then, and uh, every stupid little thing was funny. So, you still want to go to San Antonio? Sad that there is no basement in the Alamo. Tell them Large Marge sent you. Look at that! That's so gross. Do it, that's me. Let's go put them on people like me. Roads. Roads. of a very important event in this nation and really in the world. All of us have made the commitment that all places would be as accessible as possible to all the people of the United States and the world. I knew that ADA was the Americans with Disabilities Act, but I couldn't tell you what that actually entailed. Okay, we're going to be going down 750 feet. That's equivalent to a 75-story building. I mean, obviously, you, you can't not know about it. Anytime you go to a parking lot, there's parking spaces up front, and nobody's ever in them. And you think, well, I can park there. And now, anytime I see somebody doing that, I want to go slash their tires. Come on in, folks, all the way in. Back when I was injured, there weren't many examples of accommodation those designated parking places, those curb cuts, those ramps didn't exist. Those addressed publicly funded programs. ADA, on the other hand, took it the next step. 
in the past it's been an issue of race, but I mean, now it's more an issue of practicality. It doesn't seem fair that because you're in a wheelchair, you can't go into this certain place. It makes me mad because it's not fair. But we had to use our wheels as our legs, so they might, might as well have a ramp for everywhere people go because I might go places that people think I might not go. And like, it's really important for me to go there. It approach disability as a civil rights issue. I mean, that's why ADA is important. It, it approached disability as a civil rights issue, and it said, allow me to get down into the canyons. You know, don't deny me the opportunity to do it differently where I can do it differently. Darius is 15 now and uh, still celebrating life every day, celebrating ADA as well today. And I just want to tell everyone how accessible this place is. We're walking through the pass, and not only are there just this very intricate ramping system inside here, there's actually options. There's places where you can turn left or turn right. Darius considers himself a spelunker now. But the fact that a cave like this, as ancient as these walls are, can be wheelchair accessible, then a building that we build from scratch, where we have control of every rock and every nail and every board, can certainly be ADA compliant without too much extra effort. My earlier years, it was a movie theater, but the movie theater was down steps. When Mark Johnson told me a story about an unaccessible movie theater, two ideas or questions really stood out profoundly with me. And we went over there and they said, can you get out of your chairs? No. Well, uh, did you bring anybody and carry you down? We said, no. We live in a world where Darius might not be able to get into the movie theater to see his own movie. Mark and his friends struggled to create change. You know, we interacted, you know, through phone conversations and, and letter writing, and they eventually promised to do it. But they didn't do it. We were essentially trying to use MTV to create change. And we were writing them letters, and it wasn't working. Making phone calls, and it wasn't working. What fascinated me about Mark's story was that they made it work. And so what became obvious is, you know what, we need to take this to the public now. Called the media, and a bunch of us went down to the movie theater, and we took over the ticket booth. Is If there's a policy or a law out there that can't get changed, you know, sometimes you have to confront it in a very public, obvious way. Is there any other message you want to send out or say? Or? Um, well, our trip started out originally with the North Star to get Darius's wheelchair pimped on NTV's Pimp My Ride. His goal um, is to really just be a hero to a huge audience and bring mainstream attention to muscular dystrophy by borrowing that mainstream attention that Pimp My Ride has. So um, perhaps uh, we have some other surprises up our sleeve. We'll see. All right, that's all I need. So the question became, can we use the press to increase our chances of getting on Pimp My Ride? And admittedly, that's not the noblest of tactics, but sometimes the ends justify the means. Well, this summer, a group of young men will leave Athens, Georgia. Their journey will change who they are. One young man is traveling the country to see if public facilities are accessible. Darius Weems. Darius Weems. Darius Weems. Darius Weems is telling the country about Duchenne muscular dystrophy. So I'm not ashamed of being a wheelchair. You got to keep on going. But there are other things you need to know about this trip. Footage will show which attractions are wheelchair friendly. And they're filming a documentary. Make a documentary. Make a documentary. Make a documentary out of it. The documentary should take about a year to a year and a half. You can follow by clicking on Darius Goes West. What we do and see, who we meet along the way, make us who we are. It's the journey, not the destination. This journey does have a destination. They will ask Pimp My Ride to customize and rig him out with a special wheelchair. Complete with a Sony PlayStation and spinners on his wheels. It's truly one of a kind, but nothing they do will send chills down our backs or tears down our cheeks like the ending of this story. They're on the way right now. A couple of minutes they're going to get to the Grand Canyon, they tell me. That is the number one place that Darius wants to see. Then it's on to Las Vegas, which is the number two place he wants to see. They've already been to New Orleans, and they took Darius to Panama City, Florida. He had never seen the ocean before. They took him out of his wheelchair. They told me he put him in the surf, and for the first time in his life, he felt the water lift him. And then he laughed. <laughs> Make you feel proud. Make you feel cool that you got friends like that. Hey, Sam, you go get my camel. There he goes, 
Can you take a picture on this camera? Yeah. You wanna turn it on? You recording? This is the biggest place I ever seen. It's just something that you gotta see. Feeling like I'm the king of the world. <laughs> MTV, what's up? Where you been? What's happening? Hadn't heard from you in a week, so decided I need to rap. I'm in Vegas, bouncing down the Boulevard strip. And my wheelchair been breaking off and on the whole trip. Sometimes work fines and sometimes it don't. It's time to pimp ride and I'm scared to say you won't. Y'all might see a wheelchair and say, how can I treat this? Just in case you're struggling, I went ahead and made a wish list. First, let me say my chili, big and chili, mate. Back in Georgia, they say it's the biggest in the state. So there's plenty of room for pimp dog pluses. Roll with me as we begin to discuss this. At the hotel, I realize my need for speed. So there's one order of nitrous outside, please. In Vegas, all the hotels have arcades. Wheelchairs complete with our video games. With y'all's kids, we can make this a original creation. I want a flat screen TV and a Sony PlayStation. City of sin with lasers shot on my friends. So I need a sidecar where my crew can ride in. With my disease, my screen in life come from my mouth. My wheelchair takes me west, east, north, and south. For my girl, I want a bear, so I must call home. I can't hold a cell, so I need a speakerphone. On the script, I learned I need some lights. If I was bright, I'd be safe when I'm riding at night. I like yellow, blue, green, and red. Scratch that. I like lemon. Get the orange instead. When it rains, I don't roll. I need a waterproof to protect my sneakers. Speakers, so woofer. Of course, those are for my listening pleasure. But for comfort, I need seats of leather. Seats of leather. Hope that helps. Thanks for corresponding. Headed west, thanking me fondly. P.S. My need for speed. In the beginning, when, when my life slows down, want my wheels to keep spinning. DGW, know about it. Put the light on your face and tell us a ghost story. Darius, what's your story? Okay, it's a story about the ballest man. He had no balls. <laughs> <laughs> so he said, gosh, I gotta go find me some balls. <laughs> <laughs> so he went around scavenging and he wore like a hook on his hand. His favorite phrase was, I'm gonna get you. <laughs> <laughs> or, or sometimes you say, I'm gonna get your balls. <laughs> so I actually found this psycho dude. So like he was in the courtroom tomorrow. I just wanted to have a big family. The judge was like, get to the point. <laughs> but he ain't never go to his trial. He got an adrenaline rush. He broke down in jail. Guess what? He started helping the community. And somebody said they saw him one time. <gasps> Look, man! This is man. like him reaching a whole different level. Well, he can't even get over a curb in his wheelchair at a gas station, and here he is flying off in a hot air balloon, something that most people will never experience. Darius, you are flying. <laughs> Don't get turned my wheelchair. Oh, it's now. <laughs> what you see? Like, you know, like on TV, uh -huh. and they be showing folks way up and have, um, high in the air. Like, uh -huh. you can really see them patches. Hey Dave, can you copy? Bye. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Loon goes there, we gotta go, we're about to land. So now we'll do is we'll pop the top once we're clear. Okay. And that'll make sure we come in to hold on tight now. It's gonna have a little bump. You know, right? Oh, hold on tight, dude! There he's holding up! Ah! 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 <laughs> Jumping! <laughs> oh man! You alright? That's awesome. Oh! <laughs> I tell you. This was the part he was most excited about. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, are you sure you want to do this? You know your parents aren't going to like this. We are at Propaganda Tattoo Parlor in San Diego, California. It like, felt amazing. Like, I was about to faint. I had black wool. Like, I had screaming wool from, like, Athens all the way to California. And we finally made it. Like, if we added the... Somebody give me a phone so I can call my mom. Hey, Grandma, is my mom there? I was actually right there holding his hand when he got the tattoo. Hey, Mama. Still have marks from uh, how hard his grip was. Hey, put the noise up to that. Mm. Yeah, I already started. It's too late. <laughs> uh, I didn't think I would get on my back if I chose to get a tattoo. I have a skin condition and a tattoo would just cause me to break out. I personally don't really like tattoos. <laughs> I like piercings. You know, I'd do it for Darius, but I just, Darius would just rather, you know, I had good skin, I'd think. <laughs> Maybe like a pimp that we tell on my back. All of my tattoos are symbolic as a point in my life, and that whole experience is summed up in DGW. When we got to California, we had gone west. That's what I had dreamed about. I could have got, I mean, I could have got a million things written about it. It's, it's a profound statement to me, is Darius went west. We proved to the whole world that a kid in a wheelchair can travel all the way from Athens to California. And like, we made it. Like, we made it. We showing up, everybody, look how far you can go from your hometown. We were so far from home that we was in different time zones. And now we out there, so my opportunity to shine ain't nothing ain't in the way that can stop me. In working with Darius over the years, his wheelchair has broken down many times, caused many problems. Man, that wheelchair was so raggedy, man. Like, every two months he'll tear up or something be wrong with it. Like, it was worn out. Like, on the trip, it, like, finally died. California, like, it didn't work. It didn't want to come on no more. Nothing. We had to go back to the rolling wheelchair. It was incredibly frustrating. I mean, we finally get to L.A., and the first place we go is a wheelchair repair shop. I'm not sure, but I want to say that he either bumped it into something, uh... Uh, overheated it because that fuse doesn't look like it blew up. It looks more like it, it melted. So what do you think about this chair is falling apart? Uh, quite frankly, I'll be honest with you, it's new time for a new one. Yeah. <laughs> no kidding. Usually we can fix Dee's chair when it breaks down, but not that time. I think the only thing that made it bearable was that Loreen Arbus, our United Cerebral Palsy sponsor, put us up at the Beverly Hilton for our time in LA. Some people are born for the road, some people aren't. Uh, it's pretty exhausting, but um, we're here at the Beverly Hills Hilton. We got five rooms. I have no idea what's going through his head right now. Must be awesome. And you know, if I go too hard, too soft, you'll tell me, right? Yeah. Okay, right away. The Hilton was like so laid out, man. Like Paris Hilton's parents owned that place. I felt like a star. Like I felt like I was born to have a massage so I can be relaxed. It was like nighttime too. The massage made me real sleepy. He passed out after that massage. That was probably the earliest he went to bed the whole trip. But it was a good thing because the next day was the big day. Good morning, Big D. What's up? What you doing, man? Back here to go to West Coast Customs. Not only were we going to West Coast Customs that day, but United Cerebral Palsy set us up with a meeting at Universal Studios with one of their celebrity ambassadors. It's just in San Francisco. Oh, yeah? So you feel like one of the crew? Oh, yeah, you want to keep more. going? One of the crew. Let's go. Canvas. We got to meet William H. Macy. How much is the lowest budget film that'll come through here? 
thousand a day. Gonna be ten million. They can't afford to come to the studio. Wow, we're doing pretty good. And we also got to meet his wife, Felicity Huffman. Action! Hi. Welcome to Wisteria Lane. This is where we shoot Desperate Housewives. And I don't know if you know this, but this season, we have a few new additions to the Desperate Housewives cast. You know, you Me and Daniel got to act out a little, little skit from On the Balcony. And I'd like to introduce them to you guys. Here they are. This is, <laughs> <laughs> this is Nanette. She's, um, Hello. Our, oh, Nanette. She's our, our new Desperate Housewives. We also have Yvette. So it's Nanette. <laughs> Desperate Housewives. So thanks. Oh, that's a different move. They were out there for a good cause, and Felicity Huffman was, you know, joking around like like she knew us. This is the other Desperate Housewife. He's actually a Desperate House husband. He's coming on. This is going to be his house. His demands were incredible, right? You wanted a lot. You got a lot of money. Yeah. Special trailer, right? <laughs> Special El Monte trailer. Yeah. He only will be dressed by Armani or someone hip. What's who's someone hip that you want to be dressed by? Jason Hees. Some cool Jason Hees. Yeah. And he's part of the Desperate by. Crew. Oh. Yeah. Holla. Okay. Yeah. Why are you listening? Ain't no thing. It's just four more houses, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It seemed like they were out there because they wanted to be out there, not just because it would look good. I mean, they really cared about what we were doing and what we were trying to do. Wait, hey movie stars. No, no movie stars. Darius goes west. That's right, Darius goes west. I have here uh, the last letter that we got from MTV. Logan, here's the bottom line. We will not be willing to alter Darius's wheelchair in any way, shape, or form in fear that we could hurt his mobility. No one wants to mess with the electrical items that could put Darius at risk. Your love for your friend is admirable, but we're not willing to take the chance. We could accommodate a visit, but we aren't willing to do this for a film. Still pictures will be allowed, but no video footage. Cool? And I won't read the name, but I do want to say that the people in this letter and the, people, the guys that we met at the shop were two completely separate entities. The West Coast Customs crew was really, really nice to us. They were very friendly and just seemed really excited about us being there. Like, they were like cool, like showing us around and they like gave me an autograph shirt. The people we met wouldn't have said what this last letter we got said. We told Mad Mike about Darius's electric wheelchair not working. I believe it was Mad Mike actually did some electrical work on his wheelchair. And Mad Mike tried to fix it for me. Which ended up not helping, that wasn't the problem. <laughs> And when we told them what we were originally trying to do, they were all about us. Talking to all of them, they loved the idea of it. You know? Especially Ish. I mean, he, he was telling us they would pimp anything. They'd pimp a helicopter. And, I mean, I wanted to say, what about a wheelchair, you know? It didn't even seem like he knew that they had turned us down. You know, and they were all gung-ho, but it was MTV that wouldn't come through. And like I said earlier, you know, I think it's red tape. If we had gotten on Pimp My Ride... And, like, make other people in wheelchair want to get out the house and do something. That would have just made everything so much huger. Like, young people could have ended up knowing about Muscle District. Everybody thought it was so cool that a kid was going to get his wheelchair pimped. And, and as a one-time episode, you know, MTV pimps his wheelchair. Do you know how much recognized they get just pimping a wheelchair? It would have been, like, big. I would say that everyone who I go to college with has seen Pit My Ride or knows what it is. We could have targeted the entire audience that has no clue who Jerry Lewis is. People will still be talking about something like that. Maybe it like make the whole thing like explode. I admit that it was an idealistic notion to try and get on Pit My Ride. I am I'm going to be on TV like. But I feel like idealism is the signature of youth. They pimp cars, why can't they pimp a wheelchair? And 70 million young people watch that show. All of them probably as idealistic as people think we were for even trying. Darius's chair, any ideas? They probably gonna put some purple fire on it. And put like doors on the side. And put three Xboxes in the back. And they put a little camera in the front. Put a TV in the back and you can hook up for a game or something. Put all the games under it, all kind of games. And then for the wheels, they put spinach. And Darius's personality would have captured them the same way it captured the 11 of us. Like the cure might be even more close than what it is right now. That was what pimping a wheelchair would have meant. That was Darius's dream.
Oh, would y'all watch the show if he got his wheelchair pinned? Yes, yes, yes. You would? Well, it's, it hasn't happened yet, but hopefully it will. We're trying our best to make it happen. And another idealistic notion on our trip was the idea of going west, the Pacific Ocean. It's kind of hard in life when a dream that you find falls from your eyes like a shiver down your spine. And you know when you go, you ain't coming back. But you still got to float because you still got to track. So you push on the bridge through the fog and the wind. And life seems short because you're pushing to an end. In the tunnels in the past, so is the light. You can only push even though you lost the fight. Lost the it's kind of hard when you go to sleep thinking about your brother. About your brother. Morning, you wake up and worry about your mother. That's your own dream. Come crash like waves on the beach. You was born with a message. But folks you can't reach. Time is so precious, friends, the world you must change. change. Feeling so restless as night turns to day. day. Travel across the country like hands on the clock. Wow. And the only door you push, it's the only door that's locked. Idealism is a signature of youth. First time I sat down in this world was the last time I sat down in this world. Darius will be a youth his whole life. I was smiling that day, and I'm gonna be smiling when I leave. You may not have reached one ideal. Cause when I die, folks ain't gonna say Darius gone. But he did reach another. They gonna say, Darius gone west. He went as far west as he could possibly go. For the last time, DGW. And he touched that ideal. Know about it. People in the wheelchair, like, that was like the funniest thing I ever did going down the hill. Real, real steep. And I kept on trying to push myself so y'all can, like, have to run extra fast after me. Maybe I was a bit scared, too, when I was going down there. It was really screen, like I was doing some kind of screen sport. Plus, I can do it in my wheelchair. Like you broke a record? Yeah. You need to first person go down that road in the wheelchair. Yeah. Yeah. I think he did break a record on Lombard Street, but Lombard Street was not the best part about San Francisco. The best part was definitely the zoo. All the zoo animals, like, they don't got like close up, close up. Go away, she'll bring her tongue out. It's so interesting to see the zoo animals. I ain't never seen a polar bear before. Polar bears are dangerous and grizzly. Polar bears are? Yeah, you ain't know that. No. Yeah, I've seen it on, uh, on the animal channel. Really? She's got two thumbs. She's able to grab a hold of branches while she's eating a lot better. I ain't never get to touch a koala bear. Are you sure you I'll touch it. Oh, there you go. Yeah. She's soft? Yeah, soft it is. Kind of feels like a dirty carpet, huh? <laughs> Do you know there's a King Darius? Yeah. You think he sat in the throne? If he got named Darius, he sat on the throne. We're at the San Francisco Zoo, and you would think one of the best stories there would be about the animals, but uh, we're actually eating lunch, and uh, we had some sushi and some wasabi with it. Come on, just give me the sushi. You want to try it? You know what it is? And we decide to make a bet, <laughs> so we make this bet on whether Darius will eat a spoonful of wasabi or not. Are we getting odds on no how long water, you can No water? Dude. They betted me like $10 to eat some good sloppy sauce and go to the sushi. <laughs> 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 Somehow, Darius thought that he could handle it. What's up? Good slide. Good slide. <laughs> A whole bunch of wasabi. And I don't know if he's never had it before or what, but. I can't say it. <laughs> Hello. Good slide. <laughs> 200 bucks to eat. A plate of wasabi. I wouldn't do that with wasabi for a hundred dollars. I don't know how much he got. He probably got like twenty. And he was like, "Dude, I'll, I'll eat this for free." Ten. You got ten dollars. You know. I'll eat this because I like it. <laughs> wasabi. Yeah. Yeah. With the W. Okay. It's hot, right? That stuff. 
Yeah. Dad, give me ten dollars. Yeah. Somebody will. Uh, Definitely. Well, no water. Try crazy. You can drink water. I can. Yeah. yeah. He did that. I don't remember if he threw up, but he was about to throw up. And spitting this wasabi out is the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. Eyes are all tearing up, you know, and snot coming out of his nose and just. Eyes watering up. Oh, uh, you looked like he was a crying little baby. It was pretty disgusting. He was on the drink. Give him some napkins. Give him in. Give him in. Give him in. But he was laughing the whole time. And everybody in this cafeteria is just looking over at these crazy kids. Someone that was around us felt sorry for him. I was like, we're just treating him like one of the boys. It's the same stuff we do to each other. <laughs> nah, my ass not working. <laughs> if anybody in the crew would have pitied Darius, then we wouldn't have reached the level of friendship that we did. So, For anybody that looks at that and says, oh, they're picking on him, they can just, you know, buzz off. <laughs> I'm trying to think of a polite way to tell us, like, get the hell out of there. To me, Darius' happiness is proof that pitying someone just because they're in a wheelchair is irrational. I don't like people feeling sorry for me. I like want them to accept me and for me. It's the last thing in the world that we need somebody to feel petted for. Wrong man, that's what this is going to I didn't. Some other, some other crew members did. I didn't have any money. Alright, I'm gonna have to owe you. I only got $2. That night, it gave me payback. People in a wheelchair, don't try it. It's a lot of it. It's hot, it will fire your booty off. Throughout the whole trip, everyone was just so nice to us. We had just everything almost given to us. Welcome to the ranch. Welcome to Colorado. The ranch kind of just reiterated that point. They had a, a big meal set out for us. Darius was loving it. Hey, do your dog chase any of them cows? By the time you're done here at the ranch, you can be able to ride, rope, Trick shoot. Okay, who's my first roper? Here's the way you got to do. This is just run over. Now you're the hero. I think I speak for all the crew when I say that we felt lucky to be the ones to get to help Darius. He values what independence he has so much. You don't even realize when you're helping him. But on the other hand, I constantly realize that he's helping me. So in a way, I think that when it comes to friendship, we're all codependent. Independence means ability to make it on your own. I think independence sometimes gets overrated. We all live in a very interdependent world. To me, it's like uh, Darius Goes West, supporting that. You know, from our point of view, the most important thing that thing says, that, that trip says to us, is people have different levels of independence, and it's OK. Darius Goes West not only really started something, but it also was a, a demonstration of how it can work. Darius Goes South on three. One, two, three. Oh, perfect. Uh, I love the part of independence that says I'm powerful and I can manage through this world. But the other side of it is I want to be interdependent on other people because then it really enriches my world and I'm not alone. One, two, three. When we find ourselves interacting, the wheelchair thing becomes second then, and there being a person becomes first. Then the world gets much closer to the way it's supposed to be. The wheels on the wheelchair go round and round, round and round. That amount of time doing that great of a thing together, there's no way that you can't have a bond that'll last a lifetime. It's just amazing how much you can come together under one idea, under one kid with such a great personality. Seeing Darius moves me to do things that I would normally not ever think of doing.
the crew is my best friends. They think of me as a regular person. All the stuff we do and the work we put into it, it's legendary. So I want nobody else to think the way we do. Who's it gonna be? I want Daniel to. Kill him. Kill him all. Y'all want to play chicken? Huh? Huh? Y'all want to play chicken? Boy. Take the women and children. The bond that we developed over those three and a half weeks is something that is even greater than the 12 of us. To be a part of it was, I guess, incredible. When I talked to everybody on the crew, it's almost like you're talking to yourself. It's like we're brothers, man. It's like we got our own little brotherhood. The bond as a crew, I mean, is. It's indescribable, you know, it's like, you know, you feel like you give your life for, you know, anyone on it just cause, you know, you love them so much. We all want to try and do as much good as we can, but I mean, I think we all realize that, you know, we're, I think we all realize that we, we gotta, you know, everything we do, we kind of have to do through days and, and that none of us will ever be a greater person as Darius is. I wish my brother would have been able to see it like together and like the trip would have been way more amusing to me. Me and him, me and him talk junk and stuff to share it with him. That would like like be fair even bigger. I think like my brother was watching OB praying for me to go there and like he was smiling down on me like, man, I might not have got to do this but like I'm half for you man. Truthfully, the only event that could even test our unity was arriving at a destination that was potentially inaccessible. Walking up to the arch, you know, you see all the windows up at the top, and you're just like, wow, imagine the view from up there. Man, we're going inside the arch. Not sure if we can or not. Hi. Hey, we were wondering if the top was wheelchair accessible. Well, the, um, there's a chance to take to the top, but to get to the car, you probably have to take like 50 steps. My house wouldn't be wheelchair accessible to Darius, and I just think if I was to have people over or something, he wouldn't be able to get into it, and that's just, I don't know. If I were a statistics man, which I'm not, on our trip, on our experience, I'd say 65% accessible. I would say accessibility was pretty good overall, except for when I would think if this wasn't accessible to Darius, we couldn't all experience it as a group. I've never felt how it really feels to be in a wheelchair. So me calling wheelchair accessibility pretty good is kind of a skewed idea. Talking about it makes it more exposed. I recommend people in a wheelchair try to fight for their rights because they can't just be courteous to people who walk. They need to be courteous to people in a wheelchair. Now, I'm saying this can't be a set, handicap accessible and the car is back cabin there. Yeah. That's a cave. You know, when I was injured 30 something years ago, it was like one in 10 people had disability. Well, now it's over 50 million Americans. You know, it happens every day. It's happened thousands of times around the world since we've been talking. You know, you have to kind of dare to be aware, meaning like some of the crew did. You have to quit ignoring and denying reality because disability's not going away. Us baby boomers are getting older. We want to stay in the same place. You might meet somebody interesting and they, and they can't get there. That's, that's what you're missing. It, whether it's Darius or any other person with disability, you know, we have some gifts to give. So this community doesn't have the opportunity to receive our gifts if they're physically or attitudinally inaccessible. They that all the places successful, they make me feel like I completed their goal. I don't matter where it's the same pe people in wheelchair just like me. Until you got to know Darius at the level you did, your attitude probably toward disability has evolved. Because what we hope ADA does is remove the, at least the physical barriers. Then I think through those relationships, that's when we'll really see the change. When we had been talking about tornadoes, I was like, man, I've driven across this country four times. Each season, I've never gotten to see one. It was a crazy storm, like the RV was shaking, like slime and stuff. It was fun, like I was hiding, like, oh no, a tornado. And then all of a sudden, it was just going sideways. This is Jerry Storm, man! And I've never been shut off the road. Ice, snow. 
I had to stop, and then I just couldn't stop. I can't miss this opportunity. I mean, if we're going to die in a tornado, we're going to die anyway when it picks us up. I did have a feeling that we were going to get it, pimp my ride to do it, but you know, just being a road trip, it was awesome. It was so refreshing, man. It was so refreshing. Everywhere we went, you know, people just supportive. And the aspect of it that excited me throughout the trip was the idea of Darius inspiring other people that they can do this. All the big fat roads, never seen them right there. The travel lifestyle, if I can do that all year round, I would do it. There's so much to see out there. I've seen most of the people probably seen in their lifetime. I hope that I see them places again. Either way, I'm going to be happy no matter what. I'm going to live my life like I'm living. People in the wheelchair, it's really important. Like, you shouldn't be afraid of traveling because some stuff might not be handicapped accessible, but like, it's a way for you to go places. No matter who you are, you can get around there. If I can get around, you can get around. Here's the man. Okay. Man, hold the hold. Get my hand, cut some food. Hey, Big Dad. You ready to come home, Big Dad? What? On the trip, he didn't want to talk to me. He talked to me about two minutes and said, I'll talk to you later. Like the third week, that he really missed his mom and stuff. We were in Atlanta now. You in Atlanta now? Yeah. You come on home that night. And my favorite part of the trip, the part he was like, feel like I'm the king of the world. Mm-hmm. Oh, shit. Hold up. You better watch your mouth, boy. I'll walk to Atlanta. His muscles, it getting worse. You know, like, you know, he used to get the whole stuff, but now he can't. Hey, let me see that chair, Dylan, so I can put my arm on it. It kind of scared me, because I don't know what I'd be like this time I go through that situation again. I told him when I see that truck come up, I'm going to run to it. Big Dad. Yeah. They're gonna think I was in the liver. What? Run, run to the RV. <laughs> Atlanta, man, there was a lot of emotions in the guys. Everybody in Atlanta knew that it was the night before the end. Uh, it's a huge, uh, I'd say it's a huge sense of uh, accomplishment, really. It feels really good. Feels like you're changing something. A lot of the people that I talked to didn't even know what muscular dystrophy was. We've spread awareness about it and just saw ready, and we haven't even made the movie. Like, I'll repeat it again. It is the number one genetic killer of children in the world. It affects every skeletal muscle in the body, including the heart muscle, which ultimately is the cause of death in our late teens and early 20s. We were in Tennessee last night. Mm -hmm. You had a good time in Tennessee? Yeah. Jason, I rode in here charger. Drove it? Rode it. Oh. Oh, I had a shotgun, too. No, you did. Yes, I did. I felt like that was me and Diesel all the time. It fills me up to know that I was able to be a part of something that had to do with somebody's life that they have never done before and probably never, never will do again. I know the muscular dystrophy is gonna, you know, start taking him over, and uh, he's not gonna be able to do a lot of the stuff, and that's what that's what got me earlier. I was thinking about that. You don't even think about it when you're sitting there hanging out with him and talking to him, but when it comes, it's gonna be rough. It's like half of his life, honestly, if not more than that, and uh, it's gonna it's gonna kill me, dude. You want me to go back to school to Tuesday? I hope I can fix my wood when I get home. We can fix your chair. My son ain't going to school like this. 
our most precious segment of our population, our children. It affects every child in every country on this globe. The send-off, it was, I've never felt that feeling before, and I don't know if I ever will. I, I was doing something then that I'm never going to do again. You can't recreate what used to be. That's what happens to the lives of parents and siblings and children that find out about this disease. It's not like it's the end of anything. What we did and what, what Darius is from this movie, it's, it's going to be a spot in history. I mean, it's, it's always going to be there. It can make you laugh on every moment. Did you need a haircut? Yeah, I got braids now. You, you ain't grown. That queen's been gone. You been gone three weeks. I'm for real. I got braids. <laughs> and he can still smile and laugh just like everybody else. But he had to see his brother die. And he's dying of the same disease. And I don't want people to know that. <laughs> He can still have a good time, even all that stuff. He had a great time. <laughs> Seems like it would only make sense to try and embrace everyone around you. It's just not fair, though, just what people have to go through because of no fault of their own. And we have so much, and we could help so many people. Everybody that's awesome, Joe, all the guys I love in the day. And all them my sons. Mm hmm. They were supposed to come up. They are physically my boys, all them my sons. Mm hmm. They did a good job with you. And I love them all for it. I don't never cry around him, because he'll be saying, You weak, don't you? Don't worry about it. You don't cry. But he said, Mama, guess what? You know what? The as you can live with most of the discipline. When he said he'll be 30. <laughs> and I hope and pray he lived to be 30. I'm older than that. Your life is shattered into so many pieces. While you're on earth, it's a reason for you to be here. There are so many pieces you can't even count them. The action that you take are actually that are gonna lead to your future. And the pieces are so small. And they you do will sit back and try to help something and make it better. Your life as it was is over. You can't stop yourself from coming to Earth. You can't stop yourself from leaving Earth. And instead you have to find a way to put those pieces together and make your life meaningful again. You hear the life to make something out of yourself. And not only do that, but also find a way to cure this disease. I a cure, it, it'd be a breakthrough for us. A lot is known about this disease. They have discovered the cause of Duchenne muscular dystrophy. They know more stuff about the disease than what they knew about it. And my brother died. There's one genetic cause, so we're talking about one target. I tell my story, like, it can help a lot. I make people like, really think about it. One domino tips over, and then all of these dominoes that are in its path begin to fall. People like me, we can help the whole world open up their eyes and know like we can help each other. If you can stop that one domino, these children are going to either be cured or they're going to have remarkable improvement in their quality of life. The generation that might come out to me, they're going to know about this disease and stuff, and like it's going to happen, like to like spark the whole world. We took this trip to celebrate Darius's life, not to save it. And on the road, I realized how amazing it is that he knows that. And it shook me. It shook me the way Mario did when he asked me to look after his brother and the way it would anybody who's been to a funeral for someone their own age. It shook me to action. We took Darius West so that all the pieces of Darius's life, the tiny memories from here to the Pacific Ocean and back, would add up to something larger than life itself. When Darius talks about a cure, he's not talking about himself. He's talking about the next generation. He's saying, look out for my brother when I'm gone. He knows that he is the vehicle. And that doesn't make me want to cry. It makes me want to fight. If it was just the parents that were excited that there may be a cure for this disease, 
then I'd be nervous. But the truth of the matter is, uniformly, when I speak to some of the leading experts throughout the world, they are all in, in agreement that a cure for Duchenne muscular dystrophy will happen in our lifetime, meaning my lifetime, my wife's lifetime. The challenge is to cure this disease in my son's lifetime. Hi. Cure this disease in Charlie's lifetime. Can you hear me? Yeah. What's Hi, it? Daddy. Oh, yeah. Your life is shattered into so many pieces. My husband took Sammy and Charlie for a swim in the ocean. There are so many pieces you can't even count them. It was a gorgeous day. There wasn't a cloud in the sky. You don't see the horizon. Your life as it was is over. There were millions of parents and kids swimming in the ocean and millions of moms and babies watching. You have to find a way to cure this disease. You know, I saw them, their backs, and they were jumping over the waves and he was picking them up and throwing them into the waves. We knew that there was a void for raising money for a cure for this disease. And I was sobbing because I was so thankful for that, that I could see them doing this and they could have this. And we decided to create a non-for-profit foundation uh, called Charlie's Fund, named after our five-year-old son who has Duchenne muscular dystrophy. But also deeply, deeply saddened and fearful that that one day they won't. We raise money and we direct it into the hands of those that we feel have the best shot on goal at curing this disease. And then when Darius Goes West came into my life, it just makes it more bearable and it and fun. Time is of the essence. Now the immensity of what he did really started to hit me and I thought, God, I'm gonna write him a letter and just tell him like what he did for all kids by agreeing to do this. A ton of money is needed for this disease. They can watch this and not feel like it's a downer and still learn how important it is to get involved because we can all band together to effect a cure. In 20 years, a generation of children with Duchenne is lost. So the race is on and we're in the race. There's gone with. <laughs> <laughs> you ready to come home? Yeah. I don't have a little boy anymore. Got a little young man. I love you, son. Love you, too. Bye, big dad. Bye. Love you. <laughs> okay. Bye, I love you. Bye. We done it. Yeah? We here. What do we do? We went west. Like, 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 like. like. Learn how to travel and stuff and learn how to have fun. Like, try to make somebody nothing. Darius loves cars. He's always looking up, you know, all sorts of cars and spinners. And we go to this Lamborghini shop. It's almost as amazing as being at the Grand Canyon. That's just who he is. He just loves cars that much. Generator out there. That's right. How many batteries can you charge? DVD player, PlayStation, everything. You see this right here? Would you put this thing underwater? Yeah, I'll put uh, the dead limit. Now we keep the best ones inside. Let's take a look in there. Boy, can we get the vision fixed? Yeah, bro. They're gonna get it fixed for you when you get home. I just want to thank everybody for coming out. Because some people wouldn't do this for me. And I got great friends take me out for three weeks and have fun with me. I want to thank you, everybody. I want to say the person who stepped up and led us the most was Darius and his laugh and his smile. And uh, thank you, man, for, for sticking us together the way you did. I appreciate it. What's the best vehicle you got in the place? We keep our best vehicle behind curtains most of the time. Yeah? Well, Tell me what you think about this one right here, Gary.
You have everything in your car that every other kid on the street has. You have full stereo system, 10 inch subwoofer. You have a 13.5 inch monitor, PlayStation 2. Gotta have it. You also have a uh, cell phone, so you know when you wanna holler at the ladies, there you go. Also have a hands free mic. Spot for your iPod. <laughs> Obviously, most important, they told me make sure that he has space. <laughs> My name is Clifton Downey. This is Georgia. We're East Coast. We take care of our own here. And I'm probably one of the baddest customizers on the East Coast. And I stand behind my reputation. I go up against anybody's challenge. Once I heard about Darius Goes West, I said, if you can call me before you head back and you guys give me a chair, I'll have a chair ready for Darius when he gets back here. Children's Wish and Mobility Design were great in, in getting the chair to me as quickly as possible. That look on his face, man, it's like, it's priceless. You can never put a price tag on that. Full Effects, which is Atlanta-based, we create people's dreams. And Darius was no different, and that's how I saw him. A true customizer sees something for what it could be versus what it is. Once I saw him in his chair, I just saw it different. He's looking at life for what it could be or what it should be versus what it is. He's got that same ability. And when he stops, his wheels keep spinning. I was shocked. I couldn't say now I was speechless. Man, the jazz would know how to type my wheelchair. They weren't joking about getting a wheelchair straight out. I ain't gonna put my precious thing in no mud. <laughs> we did it with Darius. Why can't we do it on the other kids? You want spinners? I can put spinners on your chair. Feel free to give me a call. Never seen a wheelchair that that dark. Plus, it just shows the whole world, just one person, how much bigger of a movement they can make. You better be out of your mind. You don't know who Darius Wings is. Darius! When some people ask about my trip, they be like, I, I wish I was you. Like, I don't seem like everything I could wish to see. I'm a muscular, this feet, hero. If you keep on fighting something, good happen to you. I want to tell all, the whole world, everybody who helped me, Dad's go with they will always stand my heart, and I want to thank everybody who helped me, and this is to all the people in the wheelchair. You don't have to stay at home. You can get out and see the world. Don't let your life pass by you and just stand there looking like a bump on the wall. Just do what you can, and I always remember this. Thank people who are in your life to help you and don't be mean to people and just try to do your best to live your life to the fullest if you didn't have that long to live. Right, Thank you. Man.
first time I sat down in this world was the last time I sat down in this world. I was smiling that day, and I'm gonna be smiling when I leave. Cause when I die, folks ain't gonna say Darius gone. They gonna say Darius gone west. For the last time, DGW know about it.